right ahead, Zion DRV Park on the right. We've been staying in southern Utah for the past five weeks. We came here primarily to go to Zion, and we'll post links to those videos below. But we found so much more. So if you are into off-road vehicling, is that a word? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And hiking, there's so much to do here. Yeah, we're going to tell you all about those adventures and a little bit about the oddities of the RV park that we're staying at. So stick around. People love their OHVs or off-highway vehicles. Lots of people bring their ATVs to the RV park with them and there are hundreds of miles of trails around. You can also rent one pretty much anywhere you go. And one thing you should know before you rent an OHV is that since 2023 Utah law requires that you take this sort of educational course. You can do it online, it's free, maybe takes about 30 minutes or so, but it is legally required. Today we are headed to Tokerville Falls in our OHV that we rented. It is going to be a bumpy ride, but we will be rewarded with a beautiful waterfall. We rented our ATV from Southern Utah Adventure Center and the cost for a half day rental was right around 350 bucks. Um, but you're so just gonna go the green. green. Yep, so on this right, right here, the road is called Spring Drive. Okay. So once you get there, once you hang that right, it turns to dirt and any of these trails and stuff off of here. But yes, this will take you right up to the falls. That road is pretty rough for like a normal vehicle, but in these, it's yep. perfect. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> yep. We're getting ready for our adventure. And even on the road, the main road, I've got my helmet on. Safety first, people, safety first. Forty miles an hour on the paved road seemed to be the optimal speed for Casey's hair. Hey, I was just concentrating on driving. road it's about 12 and a half miles and 850 feet in elevation gain to Tokerville Falls holy moly that was a rough ride it yes. really was <laughs>
course you know one of the biggest activities around here is hiking and we found a nice hike that's not too hard about five minutes from our RV park at West Center Knoll. part of the Red Cliffs Natural Conservation Area. There are literally dozens and dozens of trails within the Red Cliffs Desert Reserve. The Hurricane Center Knolls is just a small part of the system. But it's free to go out and there are two or three trails. And right now we are at the top of the West Center Knoll Trail. Yeah, some days it's kind of windy. windy. We've got a really nice day today. And it's also a great place to just walk your dogs. It's not crowded at all. We'll maybe see a half dozen people on the trail. We're here on, on a Saturday morning when you think it would be really busy, but there's only like five or six cars in the parking lot, and we've only seen two or three people. So I just really like it because it's convenient and just gorgeous views, especially when you get to sort of the top of this cinder knoll loop. So not only are there great views of the mountains, we can actually see almost all of Hurricane as well as our RV park from this vantage. If you've got really good eyes, which I don't, but I've got a great zoomy camera, I can see our RV, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and it's good for lizard spotting. That is more difficult than it sounds because those desert horned lizards just blend into the rock. And we even saw a turtle. A desert tortoise, not just yes, a turtle. A protected desert tortoise. They're gonna they're gonna he's gonna snap at them. He's blinking at least. Hello buddy, you can beat her. Tortoise was really moving, and for the record, I did end up beating him. For the record, I read online that turtles like their little backs scratched. Just kind of like a dog, right? Yeah. Well, well, who wouldn't? Yeah, well, I read online that you're not supposed to touch the turtles because they get excited, it scares them, and they kind of like pee their pants like a little kid. And because they're desert turtles, losing that hydration may not be a good thing for them. So I think the jury's still out on whether to touch the turtle. No turt touching. Unless, of course, they're stranded in a road. And then I've also read it's perfectly acceptable to move them. All right.
For the past month or so, we've been staying in Hurricane, Utah. And it's a good location. It's about the midway between Zion and St. George, Utah. And St. George is a nice place to go visit. There's some good hikes and stuff there, too. We've been staying at Zion View RV Park. One of the things you should know about is there's a doggy daycare in the front. So if you don't like barking dogs, this is not the place for you. Or just pick your site accordingly. Yeah. We're far enough away that the barking dogs don't really bother us. The other thing that's kind of weird, odd about the place is it's right next to this pasture with a bunch of goats. The goats are fun, but it's just a little odd, and it will make your dogs bark if they're like ours. Another thing you should know is that there is a little dog park in the back, but there is no grass. Yeah, there's no grass on the entire RV park. I think the RV park's only been around for about a year, and for whatever reason, they decided to not put any grass in, which I guess is understandable because we're kind of in the desert. So this may be an odd thing to talk about, but one downside to having rock in a dog park is that whenever you go to pick up the duke, you usually take a lot of rock with you. And I bet I've picked up at least a couple pounds of rock during our stay. So, you know, if you're an RV park owner, you might want to consider having some grass in your dog park. We have another little pet peeve, and that is that some of the dog owners at this RV park, rather than pick up their poo, they just push the rock over it and try to bury it. And not only is that just disgusting, but you know, our dogs then try to smell it and dig for it. So again, please pick up your poop. This is not one big litter box, people. Yeah. But overall, I think we've enjoyed it here. It's a good location. The management is super friendly. And if you don't want to cook, it's a great place because there's food trucks out front. Right. I think that's the best part about the RV park. There are food trucks right outside the RV park at the entrance, and we got some Mexican food tonight. And this stuff is mm, delicious. Mm. Bam. I don't know if it's technically taking a hike if we walk down to the food trucks in the RV park, but I'm gonna say it is. And I got this very small burrito. That's a two-hander. <laughs> Look at that, I can't even put my hands around it. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be very good. This girl's pro. Let's see it. Let's see it. Oh my goodness, whoa. How is it? Delicious. Besides the goats and the food trucks, there's not much to this RV park. There's no laundry or shower facilities or anything like that. But it is a good price for the area. We paid around $900 for a month and then $250 for the extra week because we were here for five weeks because there's so much to do in the area. Yeah, now I know that West Cinder Knoll is nice, but we went to some really incredible parks in the area, including Snow Canyon State Park and this Red Cliffs Conservation Area. So stay tuned for our next video on those because again, West Cinder Knoll is nice, but those parks were outstanding. 
We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And remember, whether you're on the road or on the web, stay classy. Cheers. Cheers me. Let's clean up crew. Clean up crew. Southern Utah for the fast for the fast five P. <laughs> Somebody's getting barbecued. Somebody's getting barbecued. 1150 for, oh, 1150 for a five week stay.